think today's program should be fun and interesting. Um, nobody has any financial disclosures, uh, none of the speakers, nor myself. Today's topics will relate to fever. Um, this is a quote that I love, one of my favorite quotes. As you know, I've spent a lot of my career dealing with sepsis. So um, humanity has but three great enemies, fever, famine, and war. And of these, by far the greatest, by far the most terrible is fever. Um, I think he was specifically talking more about infection, but with fever being the cardinal manifestation. But today we're going to be talking about fever uh, also as a manifestation of infections. Um, so our first speaker, Dr. Ruval Kaba, a senior resident, is going to be uh, talking about fever to treat or not to treat. That is the question. Thank you, Dr. Freed. All right, so the topic is fever, to treat or not to treat. So first, what is fever? So fever results from uh, an upward adjustment of in the thermal regulatory set point. So pyrogens such as bacterial lipopolysaccharides, tumor necrosis factor alpha, uh, interleukin-1, induce the syn synthesis of prostaglandin E2, which and then raises the set point in the anterior hypothalamus. The hypothalamus, in turn, activates heat generation through shivering and increased metabolism and heat conservation through peripheral vasoconstriction. All of this to bring the body temperature up. So normal oral temperature is approximately 36.8 degrees Celsius or 98.2 degrees Fahrenheit, with an amplitude of variability of approximately the 0.5 degrees Celsius between morning and evening. So during critical illness, the variability can be even greater due to things like disruption in the circadian rhythm, autonomic disturbances, drugs, ICU environment, and artifact. So in the interest of standardization, uh, the American College of Critical Care Medicine and the Infectious Disease Society of America define fever as the core body temperature of above or equal to 38.3 degrees Celsius or 101. Uh, degrees Fahrenheit. The prevalence of ICU fever ranges from about 26 percent to 70 percent depending on the population studied and um, the definition of infection used. So should we treat fever? It is estimated that when either acetaminophen, ice packs, or cooling blankets are used, it can cost one 18-bed ICU between 10,000 and 29,000 per year pharmacological means to reduce fever such as NSAIDs and uh, acetaminophen can cause renal and hepatic dysfunction in patients who are volume depre depleted or who have an underlying kidney or liver dysfunction. Um, although fever can be an adaptive response to stress, it can uh, increase oxygen consumption and cause some discomfort to patients. It can also increase metabolic rate, minute ventilation, and cardiac output. Uh, fever has a metabolic cost such that cooling febrile ICU patients will reduce oxygen consumption by about 10% per degree Celsius. Some small studies in sedative patients uh, have demonstrated, demonstrated a significant reduction in the rate of oxygen consumption and the rate of carbon dioxide elimination during cooling. So in septic shock, temperature lowering, lowering by ibuprofen has also been associated with increased lactate clearance. However, fever is thought to inhibit the activity of viruses and bacteria, and antipyretic treatment can decrease this action. Uh, back in the day, before antibiotics, uh, induction of fever was used to treat things like meningococcal meningitis, gonorrhea, and syphilis. It has also been found in some studies that suppression of fever with antipyretic increases mortality in viral, bacterial, and parasitic infections in different mammalian species. Uh, back in 1978, Kluger showed that an elevation in temperature in lizards following experimental bacterial infection resulted in a significant increase in host survival. Antipyretics can also prolong the duration of illness in chickenpox, malaria parasitemia, and viral shedding in ri rhinovirus infection. Thus, there is a plausible biological rationale that fever may improve outcomes in patients with infection. 
So a patient walks into a doctor's office and he says, I think I have an illness. What are your symptoms? I stay up all night dancing. Seems like you got a case of the boogie fever. Ha 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 ha. It's fatal. So into the data. So Schulman et al. 20, uh, 2005 did a randomized controlled trial of 82 trauma patients with fever above 38 degrees Celsius without brain injury who were treated with either aggressive means with antipyretics and cooling or permissive fever control strategy. Uh, this, this study was actually stopped after an interim analysis revealed a trend towards higher mortality and higher rates of infection in the aggressive arm. So seven versus one death. Lee et al. in uh, 2012 uh, did a large multi-center pr prospective observational study involving over 1,400 non-neurologically critically ill patients, which revealed different associations um, between maximal peak temperature and mortality according to the presence of, of sepsis or not. Fever above 39.5 was associated with increased mortality in non-septic patients, while moderate fever between 37.5 to 38.4 was associated with decreased mortality in septic patients. In this study, the administration of antipyretic therapy in septic patients was independently associated with an increased mortality, suggesting that mortality is higher for septic patients who fail to develop fever, supporting the argument that fever might be naturally protective. So Saxena et al., 2015, uh, in this retrospective cohort study of more than 100,000 patients, there was a negative association between early peak fever above 39 degrees Celsius um, and hospital mortality uh, found in patients with traumatic brain injury and stroke, but not in patients with CNS infection. So for CNS infection, increased temperature was not associated with increased risk of death. So the HEAT trial compared fever control by IV Tylenol with placebo in 691 randomized ICU patients with suspected infect infection and temperature of above 38 degrees Celsius. The outcome for ICU free days, 28 day and 90 day mortalities were similar in both groups. Neto et al. in uh, 2014 did a meta-analysis of three randomized control trials covering 320 patients. This showed that patients treated with antipyretic agents showed similar ICU mortality when compared to patients who were treated with placebo or received no treatment. The only difference observed in this study was a greater decrease of temperature after 24 hours in patients treated with antipyretics. Young et al. in 2012 did a study, a very large study, with 129 ICUs in Australia and New Zealand 201 ICUs in the UK with a total of over 600,000 critically ill patients um, showed that elevated peak temperature in the first 24 hours in the ICU is, is associated with decreased in-hospital mortality in critically ill patients with an infection. In the infection group, increasing peak temperature was associated with a progressively de decreasing risk of in-hospital mortality until temperature reached about 39 to 39.4 degrees Celsius. And even when the peak temperature exceeded 40 degrees Celsius, there was a significant reduced risk of in-hospital mortality. So one potential explanation for the association between fever and reduced risk of mortality in the patients with the infective illness is that these pa patients failed to mount uh, a febrile response are at increased risk of dying due to relatively uh, reduced production of pyrogenic cytokines uh, linked to a blunted immunological response. So this predisposes them to an overwhelming infection. Uh, alternatively, it is possible that these patients with lower temperature, um, either due to phys physical cooling or antipyretics, are at increased risk. Uh, Shorten at, at all. Uh, 2012 did a multi-center randomized control trial with 200 febrile patients with respiratory failure and vasopressin dependent shock uh, that were randomized either into external cooling uh, targeting normothermia or usual care without cooling 
The primary endpoint of this study was a 50% reduction in baseline vasopressor dose about in uh, 48 hours. There was no difference in both groups. The external cooling group did have a lower vasopressor dose at 12 hours, greater shock reversal, and a lower 14-day mortality rate than the non-cooling group. However, there was no difference in mortality in, uh, at ICU or hospital discharge. So, doctor, please, come quick. His fever has gone from medium rare to well done. So, questions? Any questions? Well, well done. <laughs> um, so, there's a question in the back. Have there been any studies uh, any studies looking at morbidity and fever? Do patients feel better when their fever is treated? It was a lot mixed to me, just briefly hearing what you said on uh, mortality. Uh -huh. Difficult to show, but how about morbidity? Yeah, I, I didn't look specifically at morbidity. Um, I know sometimes people or patients feel better when their fever is treated. But uh, the studies that I mainly looked at were just mortality rates or improvement of outcome. So what are you going to do? Are you going to treat fevers? Okay. Am I going to treat fevers? Well, we're going to find out in a minute when we vote. <laughs> <laughs> or you can say what you want. I've already put my answer. Well, if there are hypothesis, should you say treat fever? If your hypothesis is that patients um, have better survival if you treat fever, wasn't that the original thing? Right. Because I, that was the original, the original the, the hypothesis original is that we should treat fever aggressively because it improves outcome. Right. And yes, I don't think there are many studies looking at the previous question about, um, you know, do, does it help patients feel better? Um, clearly most people do feel better when they don't have a fever, but the next presentation will be on just how much difference does that make also treating them um, in terms of, I mean, does, is it really a clinical difference tre treating them? Yeah? Did they look at like a temperature set point? So if it was above a certain temperature in terms of the fever, it helped versus not, you know, like do... So is there a cutoff above which you should treat fever versus not needing to treat fever or, or, or maybe shouldn't treat fever? I think there was the one study so, that you... Most of these studies, uh, they wouldn't treat fever until it got to 40 degrees Celsius. So that's kind of seemed to be the consensus in all the studies. That once the fever reached pretty high points at 40 degrees Celsius, they started to treat. There was one study that didn't, and it still didn't show any increased mortality rate and actually showed some decreased mortality rate. The fever did. Yeah, the fever above 40. But most studies did. In the studies where there was an active attempt to lower fever with um, pharmacologic or cooling measures, what kinds of um, measures did they take to ensure adequate hydration? So the question was in the studies uh, comparing those who were cooled and used external cooling and, um, and, pharmacological. and pharmacological means versus not. What methods did they use to hydrate? I, I couldn't tell you. I, I didn't see any of that addressed in these studies. It seems like you can't really judge the efficacy of your intervention unless you're sure that the people are hydrated. <coughs> since, since sweating is one of our main ways of thermoregulating. Yeah. I, I, I didn't see anything of, about hydration being addressed in these patients. Any other questions? All right. Let's vote. How many feel that uh, we should treat fever aggressively? Is this myth? Or is it a myth? Confirmed? How many people think that, that um, it's confirmed that we should be treating fever aggressively based on this presentation. Nobody. About San Inez, nobody. Um, how many think it's plausible that we should treat it based on the data? 
So we have a few people, probably say about half, less than half. I think less than half. How many think this is busted? We don't really need to be treating aggressively. I would probably agree with that. You get to vote now, too. I wanted to think it was busted, but OK. <laughs> All right, well, OK. <laughs> Thank you.